Good morning, good evening to all my Facebook friends around the world. This is uh, Jeff Oslin uh, coming to you from Sydney, Australia. And uh, I just want to talk to you about my, um, my building our life successful Christian living uh, series that I've been doing. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done one and uh, we're up to session eight uh, today and I just want to look at uh, you know building our lives for, for successful Christian living. Uh, that's the name of this series and we're up to session eight and I just believe it's so important that we build our lives uh, to be the person that God's created us to be, to be successful in our Christian living, not to be overcome and, and, uh, and struggling and striving, but to live in victory and live in victory. And today's session is about uh, living uh, on the, from the power of God's word uh, with victory over sin. Uh, we, we, we all love that. We all love being uh, victorious over sin, don't we? We don't want sin reigning in our lives. And, uh, you know, as we read God's word, we can see that we can have victory over sin. We can be victorious. And, and I just want to have a look at that today. Look at the power of God's word that will give us victory over sin. See, it's not an, uh, it's not an unusual question. How do we have victory? How do we get victory over sin? It's not an unusual question, not an unusual uh, struggle. Uh, you know, our, our, the sinful nature uh, in our soul um, and uh, in, our, in our flesh uh, is always warring against our spirit man. And uh, our spirit man is always warring against uh, our, our soul and our flesh. Uh, and and it's, that's typical and it's normal and it doesn't get any easier. Uh, you know, my flesh uh, still wants to rise up and to lead me into sin. Uh, and I've got to be, uh, be careful of that and, and to stand on what God's word says about sin and, and, and that we can have a victory over sin. Jesus said, be ye holy as I am holy. Be ye holy. If he, if he says that we can be holy, then we can be holy and we can have victory over sin. And, and I just want to uh, come bring some scriptures and, uh, and lead you through some things uh, today and, and to realize that we can have. It is possible for you to live a life victorious over sin, over addictions, over strongholds and over emotional overloads over emotion god's created our emotions for a reason for a purpose for us to allow us to use our emotion to use our personality to release the presence of god uh, we're all different we're all different with our emotions but we don't allow our emotion to rule and reign over our lives because when we do that we strike out with our words or with our fists or with our you know anything else we strike out but, you know, we don't want to get to the stage where that pressure gets too much and we just burst out into sin. We don't want that. We can live a life victorious over sin, over addictions, over strongholds and over emotional overloads, over the pressure that we have around about our lives. God has given us the victory. He has defeated all the works of the evil one. We don't have to give our lives to that. We don't have to submit our lives to that uh, ever again. Uh, now, I know we're not perfect and sometimes we do. But hey, when we do, when we sin, uh, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we, we repent and we go on. We learn. We learn from our mistakes and we go on into what God has for our lives. Does anybody here drive a V8? <laughs> it's a little bit difficult at the moment with the price of petrol at the moment. But isn't that great when you have got, you've got that extra power, uh, that when you need it, you've got it there, when you're overtaking or things like that. Uh, and it's great to have that extra power. You know, it's great to have the power in our lives that will cause us victory over sin. Great to have that power in Jesus Christ that will give us the victory over sin. It says the power of God's word is unlimited in Mark 10, 27. But Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. All things are possible. Romans eight thirty seven. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Not just conquerors, 
We are more than conquerors. I love that. I love that. We are more than conquerors. We have more victory, more enough power in our lives to overcome anything because of what Jesus Christ did for us. That, that resurrection power that lives inside of us will cause us to be more than a conqueror over all the works of the evil one. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. You know, it's all about faith. Faith is all about believing what God says in his word. Faith is all about believing what God says in his word that he will do. Faith is all about believing what God said in his word that he will do in your life. If he says that you can have victory, if you said that if he says that you can be holy, you can be holy. And believing what God said in his word that he will do in your life. He will give if he will give you the victory, he will give you the victory when you put your faith. We don't have to struggle and strive in our own strength. We just put our trust and our faith in him. We are saved by grace through faith. It's not of, it's not of ourselves. We, we don't get victory over sin. We don't get victory over uh, strongholds, addictions, emotional overloads in our own strength. We get it because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. No other way. Not through anything else that we, do, that we have in ourselves. It's all because of, of what Jesus, of, of what Jesus, the Jesus we have in ourselves. Not our gifts and our talents, but what Jesus, that Jesus inside of us will give us the victory. See, I, I'm just captivated by the power of God's word. And that's why I love the word of God. You know, and we, 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 I just love reading the word of God. It's the, the written word of God leads us to the living word, reveals the living word. The word is the greatest gift that God has ever given to the world. The word is the greatest gift that he's ever given to the church, but he's also given it to the world and also and we from that we can we come into his kingdom. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he healed them. He sent his word and he healed them in verse 20 of Psalm 107. We are looking at the power of God's word with victory over sin. So he sent his word and he healed them. He sent his word for victory over sin and delivered them from verse 20 and he and delivered them from their destruction. He delivers us from the destruction and the power of sin. Isn't that marvelous? Marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. The truth will make you free. The truth that's in God's word will set you free from the power of sin. From the power of sin. You know, some people say, oh, you know, don't give me all that Bible stuff. You know, that's too hard. It's too hard. Give me something easy. Give me something easy. I'll tell you what, folks. The Jesus way, the Bible way is the easy way. The Bible way is the easy way. If we try and do it in our own strength, we will never have victory over sin. How can that be the easy way? I don't want to give my life back to sin again and be entangled again with the power of sin around my life again. I want to be set free from sin and to go on and live a, a holy life, a righteous life that God created me in, in the first place. God created me in the first place to live a holy life. The Bible way is the easy way. Your way in your strength is always the hardest way. I want to have a look at nine important points about how we can have victory over sin. Let's look at number one. We are in a battle. We are in a battle. Like I said, it's not unusual. It's not an unusual strung, uh, a struggle. Uh, you know, it says, uh, do not think it's strange when you endure uh, difficult times and, and hard times and persecution and temptations. See, your spirit is born again, but your soul and your body is not. It needs to be transformed. It needs to be renewed. And that's where the battle is. The battle is still going on. The enemy is still coming after you. 
and the enemy will always want to say things like, um, say things, you know, this is futile. Why don't you just give in to temptation? Why don't you just give in and then the battle will be over and you won't have to go through that stress and struggle and striving. Just give in. You know, that's what the enemy always wants to say. Did God really say that? That's how we got through to, to Eve. You know, God told them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in, in the Garden of Eden. And then Satan comes along. Did God really say that? You know, that's what the enemy's always saying that. And that battle is still there, I'm afraid, folks. That's not going to go away until Jesus comes again. So there's still a battle going on. And the battlefield is in our mind and in our, in our soul. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. That you, that you put off concerning the form, your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the attitude of your mind. Be renewed in your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You don't have to submit to the enemy. You don't have to keep on submitting to, any, to the enemy, to temptation and trials and tribulation and persecution and just react in the way that you've always... That's, that's the way I was taught. No, that's not. That's not your nature. That's not your culture. There's only one culture, and that's God's kingdom culture. That's the, what, what we have to give ourselves to. That you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. This is what God has created. If you look right back in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, I love that scripture. It says there that God is a spirit, we are the, so we are a spirit. God created us in his likeness and his image. And, uh, and, and he um, also created us to, uh, in, to, be, to reign, to rule and reign, uh, to have a heart after him, to be holy, to be sinful, uh, sinless, I should say, dear idea, to be sinless, to have a heart of wisdom and a heart of love and ability to choose right and wrong. That's what God's created us for. God's created us with a free choice to choose in this life where we spend eternity beyond the grave. We have given, have given us a free choice whether we want to give in as, and to, to sin or to give ourselves to what God has. Jesus has redeemed us back to what God's created us for. Created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That's what God's created us for. That's what God has created us to live out of. Number two, you're not alone. You are not alone. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? He is in you, He is with you, and He is for you. John, 1 John 4.4 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. He who is in you is the Holy Spirit. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He is gentle. He is with you. He is for you. He is in you. Learn how to tap into his power and his resurrection power that he brings that Jesus has given him and given us. He has a purpose and a function for your life. Live according to his purpose and his function. The enemy comes to, to rob and to kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. He's going to help you to be holy. And he's going to show you how you can overcome and how you can live in victory. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 14. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Do not live according to the flesh. Do not live according to your old way of life. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. Be holy in all that you do. 
for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. I don't know about you, but I found those evil desires are still there that, that I'm a Christian that I had before I was a Christian. But we can overcome that. Do not conform to those evil desires. Do not conform to uh, those evil desires when you once lived in ignorance. But be transformed, just as you are called is, is who, who, just as he called you is holy. So you be holy in all that you do. One Peter chapter four verse twelve. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is tri which is here to try to try you, as though some strange thing happening to you. See, there's still a battle going on. There's a battlefield of their mind. The enemy wants to rob and to kill and destroy. But Jesus wants you to have victory over sin, over addictions, over strongholds and over emotional overloads. Number three, trust in his word. Trust in his word. Read his word. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the word of God. I'm absolutely captivated by the power of God's word. You shall know the truth. You shall know the power of the truth of God's word and it will set you free. But if you don't read his word, you won't know that. You've got to read the word, get involved in the word so that you know the truth and that truth will set you free. One of the greatest gifts that God has ever given to the world is his word. There's power in his word and you must believe and you must have faith in that word. That, that the resurrection power is released as you put your faith in his word. As you put your faith in his word. James 1. I love scripture. I love the word. And there's a lot of scripture here. And I don't make any apologies that because I love the word. I'm captivated by the power of God's word. As I read the word, the Holy Ghost will bring his word alive into my spirit and into my mind and, and, and my mind is renewed. I renew my mind to in alignment with God's word. James 1 verse 20. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The things we get involved, the old things that we get involved in, when we go back into our old way of youth, the way we used to think and do things, that will not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Let the word of God be rooted inside of you. Let it be planted inside you and let it grow uh, to the extent we have this great power, the resurrection power of God's word living inside of you, causing you to be victorious over all the works of the evil one. Come on, we can do this, fact. Allow that implanted word in our hearts. Be able to save our souls. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness. How we can live a life of righteousness. By reading the word. That the man of God may be complete. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Read the word. Read the word. The written word leads us to the living word. Reveals the living word. Reveals the power that comes through the resurrection power to overcome sin. <clears throat> Number four, there's power in the name of Jesus. When we ask Jesus to come into our lives, the power of his resurrection life comes in out into our lives. That resurrection power comes into our lives, comes into our lives. See, J Jesus chose to live a life free from sin. He chose to live a life free from sin. So he broke the power of sin in his life. Because he broke the power of sin in his, in his life, it is also, the power of sin is also broken in our lives. See, if we're watching a football match, 
and our side wins the game, we win the game. Even though we were sitting in the, in the grandstand, we won the game. We won the game. Our side won the game. I won the game. We won the game. Because Jesus won the battle for us, we win the game. We win the game because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because he broke the power of sin in his life, he also breaks the power of sin in our lives as well. He chose to live a life free from sin. He chose to live a life unto God. We also need to choose to live our lives unto God, not unto sin and unrighteousness. We choose to allow the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to rule and to reign in our lives, not sin. We choose to allow that resurrection power to rule and reign in our, in our lives, not sin. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised, who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, in you, he who rose Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you. So that same resurrection power lives inside of you. He will quicken your mortal body to give you victory over sin and over addictions and strongholds and emotional overloads. Ephesians 2.6 And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places. There's a scripture in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think it's around, tw uh, around verse 21, I think it is. He who knew no sin to be sin, for, uh, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we can live the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That we can be righteous, that have the righteousness of God in our lives at, at, through Jesus Christ. He lived a life without sin, even while he was on earth. He was the son of God, but came the son of man. And even while he was living here on earth, he remained sinless because he, he just gave himself to the Father. He focused on what, the, of what God wanted in his life, not on what the enemy wanted around his life. He always came and tempted, the enemy always came and tempted him, but he focused on God. He focused on God. We can live that life as well. We can live the, that life. So because Jesus knew no sin, and God was pleased with him, and what he, if, and what he did, he accomplished his purpose. He died on the cross. God accepted his sacrifice for us. When he died on the cross, shed his blood for us. God accepted that by raising him from the dead and seating him next to the Father, next to him, because he was holy and righteous. We also can be seated together with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because we are holy and righteous, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in, in the next point. But just remember that we are also seated together with Him because we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Our spirit is born again and holy and righteous unto Him. Let's start going on to that point. Point number five, walk by the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, 16 and 18. I say then, live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lust, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And, um, and that's that battle I was telling you about. And these are contrary to, to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you will not Fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Give yourself. Give yourselves to that. Give yourself to what God has for you. We will always have victory over sin if we walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit. See, our, our Spirit is born again. Our Spirit is full of God. Full of righteousness. Full of holiness full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit, full of the mind of Christ. My spirit doesn't sin. 
It doesn't want to sin and it has a heart after God. My spirit is born again. It is completely holy and righteous and full of the Holy Ghost. That's why I can be seated together with him in heavenly places. Oh yes, Jeff, but I, I sin, I, I get angry, I get, um, I get um, offences, I get unforgiveness around my life. That may be so. But listen, if we are willing to confess that sin, uh, God is willing to, to, is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteous. But even apart from that, my spirit man is holy and righteous and I can be seated together with he him in heavenly places. Now, if we give ourselves to sin all the time, it is sure it's going to be difficult for you to, to reach out. Even though your spirit is born again, it's going to be difficult for you to reach out to realize that you can be seated together with him in heavenly places. Because that spirit, uh, that flesh in, in our soul that wants to cause us to sin and go back into that old way of life, uh, you know, will cause you to be guilty. Uh, and and you, sometimes we are consumed with the guilt and that it's difficult for us to reach out and to be seated together with him in heavenly places. But listen, we've got to give ourselves, repent of our sin, ask God to forgive us, and then realize, hey, we are, hey, hey, I can be seated together because my spirit is holy and righteous and without sin, doesn't want to sin and has a heart after God. So I can be seated together with him in heavenly places. My born again spirit cannot sin. My soul and my mind, sure. So where do I sin? If my spirit man doesn't sin, my born again spirit doesn't sin, where do I sin? We sin in our minds, don't we? Which we need to renew to, be, to fall into line with my spirit man and to fall into line with the word of God. That's where we sin. We sin in our minds, which I need to renew, to fall into line with my spirit man and to, to be aligned with the word of God. God is a spirit and I must fellowship and worship him with him through who I am in my spirit. I am a born again spirit so I can relate to him. God created us for a relationship not for religion. God created us for righteousness. God created us for fellowship. God created us for relationship. And I can have all of those things because my spirit is born again. It is spirit to spirit. We communicate, we relate spirit to spirit, not through my mind. Because sometimes that's not fully uh, aligned, not fully renewed, not fully transformed. It's getting there and, and, and that will be completely renewed and transformed when Jesus comes back. But up until then, we've got to, we've got to do that. We need to conform ourselves to who we are and what, God, what God's word says we are. I am washed in the blood of Jesus, made holy and righteous without sin. So now I can be seated together with him in heavenly places. I can be seated together with him in the throne room. I, the Holy Spirit takes me to the throne room where I can listen to his heart, listen to his heartbeat, listen to the will that he has for my life, listen to the purpose that he has for my life. God always creates something for a purpose, for a purpose. He created you for a purpose. We need to go to the throne room. We can't be scratching around here on earth trying to figure out what our purpose is. Go to the throne room. Go to where God is. And we can because we are a born again spirit. And he draws us, his Holy Spirit draws us to, to the throne room. When we give ourselves, he draws us to the throne room where we can hear the voice of God, hear the heart of God, hear the purpose of God that he has for us. I am a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 I am a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 8, sorry, verse 5. 
those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires but those who live according with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires it's all about our desire all about our focus the mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace if we live and walk according to the spirit we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh that is good news that is what the bible says that's what the word says and that's why we need to understand get a revelation of the word causes us to be victorious over sin the key to living in victory is what we do with your mind with our minds when we come to jesus our mind still wants to do all the wrong things the enemy knows that so he that's where he attacks us that's where the battlefield is did god really say that did god say you you can't do that surely you know that you if you do that you'll enjoy you'll have all the fun and all the pleasure does god want you to miss out on fun and pleasure of course god doesn't want you yeah you can do that don't listen to that don't listen to that battle that's going on in your mind about the doubts that, that, that the enemy wants to put in your mind the battlefield is in the mind we see we still live in a fallen world we still live in the fallen world and the reason why the enemy is still the prince of this world is because there's uh, there's people out there that are still willing to make allegiances with him still willing to give their lives to sin and give their lives unto him uh, and, and, and open up their lives for sin and open their all lives up for the enemy and the only reason why the enemy has some some control over your life because we give our lot we give ourselves to that we give ourselves to sin we give ourselves to pleasure and sin and temptation and stronghold we give ourselves to that but listen we don't have to submit to that he is a defeated foe he is a fallen angel and still falling we can have victory because of what jesus did because jesus has the victory we also have the victory because he won the game we also win the game even though we're seated in the crowd we still win the game <laughs> we still win the game so set your mind on things above colossians chapter 3 verse 1 since then you have been raised with christ we are seated together with him in heavenly places. We are raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Set your mind on things above, not on the earthly things. Live in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Jesus is exalted and seated next to the Father because he is without sin. Even during his time on earth, he was, out, was without sin. We are seated together with him. We are seated together with the Father in Christ Jesus. Because our spirit man is washed in the blood of the Lamb. It is washed pure and holy. Our spirit man does not sin. Where do we sin? We sin in our mind because we give ourselves, allow our sin to be manipulated. Uh, and we, so that's why we need to renew our minds back to the word of god back to the mind of christ our spirit man is full of the mind of christ full of faith we have that faith within us we need to release our faith release our faith in the power of his resurrection so set your mind on things above set your mind on things above then all the things that come in if we don't if we don't do that then all the things that come into our minds will control you will have an impact in your life what we allow to come into our minds determines which direction our life will go and all that we will experience 
I'm just going to read that again. So set your mind on things above. If we don't, then all the things that come into our mind will impact you and will control you. What we allow into our mind determines which direction our life will go and all that we will experience. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not conform to the old way that we used to think in the futility of our minds, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transform comes from the Greek word metamorpho, metamorpho, which means to transform what is on the inside to work its way to the outside. Going back to that scripture, verse 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasure and pleasing and perfect will. Then you will know what God's perfect will for your life is. Because your mind is, is transformed, your mind is renewed. What's on, what's on the inside? That What's on the inside will work its way to the outside. What's on the inside? Jesus is on the inside. He li we are a temple of the Holy Ghost. We, he lives inside of you. His home is, you, is your body. His home is your, is your soul. Your soul, I should say, is, is his home. We are a temple on the, of the Holy Spirit. How does all this happen? How does all this happen through God's amazing grace? God is a good God. He is good all the time. It happens because of the grace of God through faith. By faith in what God says in his word. That you are a born again Christian, born again believer. Any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and behind all things become new. And all these scriptures that I'm reading to you. Believe what God says in his word, he will do in your life. When I walk in the spirit, when I walk in his spirit by faith in his word, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We are saved by grace through faith. We are released, we are transformed by grace through faith. We are delivered by grace through faith. We are set free by grace through faith. We are healed by grace through faith in his word number six clothe yourself with jesus romans 13 14 rather clothe yourself with the lord jesus christ make no provision make no provision do not even think about it do not even think about it to gratify the desires of the flesh stay away from that stuff you don't have to submit to that. Jesus is Lord of your life. He, cre he, crea he makes you more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God before me, who can be against me? Let's believe what God said in his word, he will do in your life. When you put your trust and your faith in his word. Make it easy for yourself. Don't go anywhere near that stuff. If you see a beehive, you get away from it, don't you? You don't go near the beehive, you stay away from it. Stay away from temptation. They're always going to come, they're always going to trial, there's always going to be trials and tribulation, but stay away from that. God will always give you a way of escape. We talked about that in my last session. Stay away from anything that causes you to stumble. Make no provision. Don't even think about it. Don't let your mind go there. Listen to the Holy Spirit that's inside of you. Do what He says to do. Do what He says when he's, what, what, and do the things that He's talking to you about. Number seven, get into His Word. I've touched a little bit on this. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I looked at this before. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work and living with victory over sin. Living in victory over sin. Read the word. It will encourage you. It will strengthen you. Feed on God's word. If you don't, you'll be weak and you'll be pushed around. Stand upon his word. Live in the word. Renew your mind with the word. Renew your mind back to the word of God. Number eight, discipline yourself. For 2 Timothy chapter 1, for the spirit of of God gave uh, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid for the spirit that God gave us does not make us timid but gives us perfect love and power and a self discipline we can have that we can be dis self disciplined you know with discipline there's three levels of discipline there's self discipline where we discipline ourselves if we struggle with that in our growing up time, if we struggle with discipline, there's always parental discipline. Mum and dad were always around there. A father figure was always around there watching over us, bringing discipline. If we couldn't bring self-discipline, then there was parental discipline. If we don't listen to self-discipline, we can't self-discipline, we don't listen to parental discipline, there's governmental discipline. There's the, the police and if you're not careful, he'll throw you into jail, which is also governmental discipline. So come on, let's let's get our let's self-discipline ourselves, so we don't have to go on to parental discipline or, or even through our bosses, uh, our, our our employer, or then there's the governmental discipline through the police or even in jail. Number nine, get people around you who can help you. We were talking uh, in uh, street witnessing last night and, and two young guys gave their hearts to the Lord. And the first thing I said to him, I said, listen, read the word. Get, get in fellowship. Read the word. Get people around you that will help you, that will strengthen you and that will encourage you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. Don't mix with bad company. Stay away from that stuff. Make it easy. Make then make it easy for yourself. Stay away from that stuff. Think carefully about what is right and stop sinning. For to your shame I say that some of you don't know God at all. For to your sh shame I say that some of you don't know God and don't know the word of God. Romans 7, 24. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't that exciting? Jesus Christ sets us free from the power of sin. He sets us free. The Word says that. Know the word. Know what's in the, the power of God's word. It will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. The power of God's word gives us victory over sin. If you want to reign and live in life, live above, above sin, look to the one who defeated sin. And that was Jesus. He broke the power of sin over his life. And when he did that, he broke the power of sin over your life. You don't have to submit to sin any more any more longer, any longer. Hebrews chapter twelve verses one and two. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all those ones who went before us that were victorious, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. 
let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of faith for the joy set before him he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god because he was victorious he shed his blood he fulfilled his purpose shed his blood overcame all the works of them and even defeated the works of the evil one and because of that he was raised and seated next to the father and because of the shed blood of jesus we are washing his blood we are holy and righteous and we also are seated together with him in heavenly places it's difficult for us to break through when we've got such a entangled around with sin around our lives but as we read the word we get a revelation we can throw off that stuff throw off the old way that we used to uh, we used to act and, and 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 live and we can live according to what god says in his word we renew our minds we renew our minds. Our sin nature that we have in our flesh, in our soul, we can get rid of that. God found a way for the children of Israel through the Red Sea. And he will find a way of victory for you. A way of victory for you over sin. And that is through Jesus. He defeated all the works of the evil one. He defeated all the works of sin around your life. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 He who sin is of the sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose for this purpose was the son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the evil one. I don't want to open my life up to sin ever again. And if we do, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. He is a just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We get rid of that stuff. We, we focus on what God has done. We make no room for the things of, of the evil one. He has already destroyed the works of the devil. He's not coming back again to die on the cross. He's not coming back to defeat all the works of the evil one a second time. He's already done that the first time. He's coming back a second time for you and for me. So he can take us home. Let's get ready for his return. Let's throw off sin. Jesus has defeated sin. He has the victory over sin. Because he has the victory, we also have the victory. I don't want to open my life up to sin again. I don't want the enemy to have control in those areas of my life ever again. Let us live victorious over sin. You want it an easy and simple way? It's the Bible way. It's the Jesus way. That's how we can have victory over sin. I just believe that God's talking to some people today. Talking about the direction of their life. Realising they, that, that God's bringing a, a revelation knowledge. That they need to throw off those, that, that, that old way of life. They need to renew their, their, their lives, renew their mind to the Word of God. Throw off all of that stuff. You are a born-again spirit. You are holy and righteous. You are full of holiness, full of righteousness. So where do I sin? I sin in my mind, not in my spirit. My spirit man is holy and righteous. I can have a relationship with God. When we keep on sinning, we struggle with, with believing that and reaching out and, and having that relationship that God wanted us to have in the first place. God created you for righteousness. God created you for a relationship. We can't have both. We can't have sin and, and have a relationship with God. We need to get rid of that. You know, Our spirit is born again and we can have that. But we need to throw off that stuff 
so we can fully come into what God has created us for. for. And as we renew our minds, then we know what God's perfect will and purpose for our lives is. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Do not be conformed to the things of this world, but renewed, but be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you, know what, that you might know what the perfect will of God is for your life. It's an exciting life. It's the easy way. Don't have this attitude, oh, you know, don't give me that stuff. That's, that's too hard. Don't, don't give me that. Give me something easy. I'll tell you what, folks. Listen, you are being deceived. Jesus is the easy way. The Bible way is the easy way. Give yourself to him. Focus on him. Live in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Live out of the spirit. Don't live out of the flesh from your soul and your unrenewed mind. Live out of the spirit, man. And allow your spirit man to be in control. So many times it's our, it's our soul. You know, our soul has always been in control. And we lived our life the way we wanted to live. Now, you know, that, that control is still there. But we can use that to, hey, listen, soul, listen, emotions, listen, will. We're going to live according to what God, what God wants. We live according to our spirit man. We're not going to follow after that anymore. We're going to follow after the things of the Spirit. Your, your soul, your spirit of control can do that. You can let go of that and live to the Spirit. Come on, we can do this because of what Jesus has done in our lives. He lives inside of us. The resurrection power of Jesus lives inside of us. The Spirit of God, we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And he is renewing our minds. But we have to give ourselves to that. Give ourselves to that so that the Holy Spirit can do all the work for us. But we have to give and surrender and yield to what God wants in our lives. The enemy wants to, he always wants to rob and to kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Give yourself to him. Give yourself to Jesus. That's where our victory comes from. Not in our own struggle and striving according to our, our, our gifts and our talents. We give ourselves to him. He's won the victory for us. I really believe that God's speaking to people. Come on. You go into your throne room. Go into your quiet room. Go into your prayer closet. Today. Tonight. Seek after God with all your heart. Give yourself to that. Throw off that sin that easily entangles you. You don't have to submit to that ever again. He wants to tell you, come on, just give into it. You know, if you give into it, the battle's over. But no, listen, if you give into it, that's always going to be death and lead you to a path of destruction. Give yourself to what God has for your life. And that will lead you to a life of abundance. The abundant, everlasting life that God created you to have in the first place. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. It's uh, just been a, been a pleasure speaking to you. And uh, just believe that for Holy Ghost is speaking to people. Uh, just give yourself to that and allow him to renew your mind, to renew your mind to your spirit man. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.